Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today we got a really neat show for y'all. It's the eighth installment of our cooking class and uh, we got some really cool things for y'all. We're doing hamburger steak, we're doing a couple different ways for mashed potatoes, we're doing red beans, tuna stuffed tomatoes, cheesecake, probably even something a little extra. So y'all hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, Karen, we got something really good today. This is a cool recipe that I've been doing. Uh, it, I dirty up all the dishes in the house when I'm making <laughs> it, but uh, it's quicker the way I do it. Mm -hmm. So we're starting with three pounds of ground meat. Okay. Then you'll be putting in two thirds a cup of breadcrumbs. All righty. Two eggs, two tablespoons, excuse me, one tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, mm -hmm. one tablespoon of Worcestershire. So that's all seasoning right. up the meat. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, granted, you could put just about any dog on oh, thing. Yeah. How about if I do these eggs That'd for you? That'd be awesome. Here we go. These breadcrumbs is what's going to hold it together along with these eggs. Now, um, now were these Italian breadcrumbs? These they are. Like they had little, these are. They these like are a little fancier than if, normal breadcrumbs. <laughs> and if you don't like Italian breadcrumbs, don't use them. But they just got a little bit of Italian seasoning, so I'll just give it a little, a right, little it, A little more wang. Yeah. A little more bang. <laughs> a little more bang for the buck. Oh yeah. So um, here we are getting this started. I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. She's gonna get this mixed up. I'm gonna start making some patties, and we're gonna get the skillets on the grills, and we'll start frying some. So y'all hang on. Here we go. All right, y'all. We got the fires lit, and. Uh, Kara's fighting the skillet over here. We've been uh, laughing about the skillet. Don't yeah, want to sit right over. Yeah, the skillet and I are going to have some words here pretty soon. <laughs> we might have to hope you know how to beep stuff out of that. <laughs> well, the coolest part, um, what we do, and it was three pounds of ground meat. So I just started making six balls. So you end up with a half a pound each. Mm -hmm. I'm going to set it in there for you. You got it, okay. There you go. All so right. we got all six in there now. So if you got seven people, they got to go to Burger King or McDonald's. something, <laughs> find them something else. But um, I, I do this with two skillets, but number one for two things. Number one, I start off with my little roux gravy in one after these are done. Mm -hmm. Both of these are done. I'll start off with my little roux gravy over here mm -hmm. and then I'll put some onions over here and smother down the onions oh, over here at the same time. Good. And here's where I'm messing up the whole kitchen. I put the big pot over there and you end up dumping everybody in there together. Oh, okay. But um, huh. I want to tell a little bit about hamburger steak though. Okay. Uh, hamburger steak is really called Hamburg steak. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a patty of ground beef made popular worldwide by m migrating Germans. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's crazy. Um, became a mainstream dish around the start of the 19th century and mm -hmm. it's very similar to Salisbury steak. Okay. Um, the oldest document that refers to hamburger steak in English is a Delmonico's restaurant. Oh yeah, they're famous for, the, for their aged steaks. Well, their menu was 1873 and it offered customers 11 cents a plate. Oh wow, for and, a and hamburger that, steak. And that was high at the time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, documents show in 1887, which mm -hmm. a little bit later, some U.S. restaurants and hospitals feeding their patients use this type of preparation style. The hamburger steak was served raw or lightly cooked and was accompanied oh, by a raw egg. I, mm. So our hamburger steaks have come Ooh, a long I way is so. about all I can say on that. Yeah, I don't know about a raw hamburger <laughs> steak. 
Uh, the preparation is made from beef, which is finely chopped, ground, or minced. Mm -hmm. uh, seasoning would be eggs, breadcrumb, onion, and milk. And then form into patties cooked by frying, roasting, or smoking. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them smoking in the big restaurants. They smoke them. Um, oh, I bet that's delicious. I, I bet too. I bet that adds a good a good oh, kick absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Now, um, what we're gonna do, and mm -hmm. well, the best thing for a hamburger, mm -hmm. and I like to laugh about some of the things that we see on the food channel. Oh, they yeah. only flip it one time. Well, gotcha. you won't go to jail if you have to flip it right. again. Right. It's it's all right. Yeah. And also, my pet peeve is they telling you. When you make that hamburger steak, don't mess with it and don't mush it and don't make it all. It'll be tough. Mm -hmm. Well, it's ground meat. It's how, can it, <laughs> how can it be tough? I know. I can oh, see goodness. It. That's hilarious, but I, I hear that a lot on TV. So yeah. I, and I keep thinking, well, your grinder ain't doing too good if it's tough. Ah, uh, well, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, I just don't see how this could be tough at all. Well, so, these are getting a nice brown uh, yeah, on them. They're looking we all get, kinds of pretty. We're right there. Tell you what we're gonna do, y'all. She's gonna finish browning this, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with the two skillets next. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all, we got the meat browned out. And uh, the reason for the two skillets, what I do is, um, we start with the roux in this one, and she's ready to put onions in that one. Yeah. Let me let me stir it while you're doing that. And and, and the that's one onion chop. That's a big onion too. I'm gonna tell you. And this is my roux that I made ahead of time. And there's lots of ways to do this, y'all. You don't. You can dump canned gravy in here and go with that. But for the folks at home that don't know how to make from roux. I'm using two tablespoons of roux and we're going to end up using all of this 32 ounce beef broth. Um, so I brown the onions over there as much as you like. Mm -hmm. We got some here and we got some chopped up onions we'll end up putting in here too. So okay. th what's, what's really cool about this and uh, I've just learned this not long ago. The um, I, the canned gravy is so easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so easy. Oh, yeah. I'm and when you're at the I camp, you know, when you're at the camp, you don't really want to make a roux and do all of that. You um, you can dump the canned gravy in there and go back to hunting. Just go from there. <laughs> I'm turning this one up for you. I'm going to slip around here and turn this other one up just a Alrighty. little bit. Just a little bit. So, 
Let me tell them what all we got in here. Okay. All right, in the, in the roux is gonna be the 32 ounces of beef broth. Mm -hmm. We put in the, once we get going in there, we'll put another teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. And this is my little love right here. This uh, mm -hmm. mushroom, it's made by Dawn Fresh. It's a mushroom steak sauce. And I use it in several things now, I, I, I really do. Uh, in my sauce pecans and on this, mm. it, it gives it a rich, rich, uh, what they call umami. Oh, uh, umami, into it. Yeah. yeah. So, and then I took a half of an onion. Mm -hmm. That's gonna end up in here. When it, when it starts getting creamy, you can go ahead and dump the onion. Okay. I'm gonna get a little bit more beef broth water. in there. And uh, let me make sure I got everything in here. The onions. We got the sliced onions in there, and also salt and pepper to taste, and that's almost the, the, the given, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, of course. I'm gonna sneak around behind you, All investigate right. these onions. Yep. Now, on on this oh, those smell good. On this skillet right here, I dump everything out of it. Mm -hmm. But the one that I do the onions in, I leave about a half a tablespoon just to put the onions in. Yeah. And um, we'll use some water to just in case you need to. And this is a hot skillet, look like we got right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna sneak around behind you again. All righty. Let look me like see. These about Whew. Look at there. That's pretty. Boy, that smells good. All right. So these look like these are about ready for the, I'm gonna dump the them diced in. onions. I'm going to dump them in. Okay. All right. And, um, and like I say, there's a million ways to do this. Using canned gravy is the simplest. Oh, you yeah. know, but uh, when you're done and you get to sit there and cook this down and mm -hmm. you done made a roux and you started from scratch yes that, indeed it's a little more satisfaction i guess it would be. oh and you know it tastes better because nothing oh. tastes like homemade exactly you know? exactly nothing tastes like homemade all right i'm gonna sneak around one more time all over right, here i'm gonna make sure that we don't have any lumps in our roux oh did old flipper that look at fancy. there that's how your onions you're gonna brown them up pretty good just about getting somewhere with that. I need to, learn how to that. do that flip. That's the old flip. That's from pancakes. <laughs> I never worked at Waffle House, but I always wanted to. <laughs> okay, so here we go, y'all. I don't want to bore y'all with all the crazy stuff. What we're doing next, we're going to bring this up to a ball. We're going to cook the brew down. You cook it about 20 minutes. All right, so we got That about, should be fine right there. Yep, we got and about three quarters of that box in there. And it'll, it'll all end up in there. Yeah. So we're going to cook this down a little. We're getting the onions done. We're going to bring the big pot out, dump everybody together. We're going to call it hamburger steak by the end. I'm excited. All right, Carol, we got everything in the bowl and mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get to taste the recipe. I'm so excited. Now, what folks don't know is next, we're going to be doing two different ways for potatoes. And we get mm. to put the gravy on top of it with the onions on there. Mm. Let's see, can everybody see that? Look at the onions hanging on there. Oh, so good. Those onions are so good. And that, and I'm gonna tell you, if you got kids, most kids can't eat that size, mm -hmm. a little kid. So yeah. you give them half and you get to eat one and a half then. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you like that? Mm, I do, that's delicious. That's a good old recipe. And that's way better than mine. Ah, uh, I wouldn't say that. way better than mine. <laughs> okay, y'all, she's tasting a few. Y'all better not eat all our food, and we get some t potatoes ready, so hang on. All right. All right, Kara. All right. Couldn't hardly get away from that hamburger. I know, I know. You had to take that away from me. <laughs> all right, this is a cool <laughs> recipe that you have, and mm -hmm. you've called it twice baked potatoes. With half the work. Half the work. Well, I'm all about half the work, because <laughs> I told you I make my hamburger steak in an Instapot. That's probably why yours is better than mine, because it's an Instant Pot. Oh, well. So, but this is the twice baked potatoes that kind of like you get in the restaurant and it's already in the potato shell. But this is out of the potato shell and it's quick. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead, I got a one and a quarter cup of water. Rolling this already. In a rolling bowl and I'm gonna add some butter. And it's about two tablespoons of butter. Cause got you can't go butter. wrong, you can't go wrong with butter. Mm -hmm. 
So, and then I already put about a half teaspoon of salt in that water. Uh -huh. I, I had to make sure I did that because I made the mistake of not salting my potatoes one time and they just, it's, it just don't work. So once your water boils, mm -hmm. you turn it off. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to let it boil. I'm going to let that butter melt just okay. a little bit. I want that butter to melt. So while I'm doing that, I have three quarters of a cup of milk. Well, actually, I'm going to use half or half and half. For okay. This well, that'll make it, it a little. Because it makes it a little bit creamier. Yep. Yep. And then I just have a tablespoon of ranch seasoning, just the packet that you can make the ranch dressing out of. Yeah. You can add more if you really like ranch dressing. So I'm just going to add it to the milk. Cool. And it makes it mix in a little bit better. But you don't want to boil your milk. No, you don't want to boil your milk. It could curdle your milk by doing that. So we're going to wait and add this in last. So I got my my water boiling. Looks like my, Look my like butter pretty it. much melted. Okay, I'm going to so turn it off. All right, I'm going to remove it from the fire. And I'm going to very quickly stir in my potato flakes. All right. So this is about one and a third cup of potato flakes. And I'm just kind of following the recipe that was on the box, but I added a little bit, a little something, something to it. I'm going to add some, some cheese. So I'm going to put this in and I'm going to very quickly start to stir it and it's going to thicken up. Go oh, really thick. Already. Pretty quick. And it looks kind of dry, but you're going to add your milk. And I upped the milk a little bit. It originally called for two thirds of a cup, but I'm going to do three, three quarters of a cup. So I'm going to put my milk and my ranch uh -huh, uh -huh. in it, and I'm just going to do it in increments here to kind of kind of get it moving. Well, while you get that started, mm. I'll tell you what, I'm going to do the other potato, which I grew up with back, I don't even know if I grew up yet, but when I did, <laughs> all right, all this, all I got here mm -hmm. is a half it's two and a half pounds. It's half a five pound bag. Mm -hmm. And I'm just adding a little bit of butter, okay. which is one stick. And we've softened it up a little bit. Yeah. And let me get that in there. So it, it gives you, a, if, if you like potatoes, I'm, I'm gonna call that almost jacked up. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you can call it jacked up for sure. And all I'm using in here is butter and a quarter cup of evaporated milk. Now, I probably should start mashing this mm -hmm. together before I put the evaporated milk in. Yeah. Now tell me where you had it. All right, so I got it ready to roll. And now I'm gonna, you can put it in a little ramekin like this if you wanna be fancy, you know, which, you know, I always wanna be fancy. Or if you're making for a larger crowd, you can put it into just one of these little oven safe. So I'm going to just slide it into this little oven safe bowl. And again, this just called for the ranch and the green onions, but I like a little bit of cheese. But if you, if you can't, I know. <laughs> but if you can't do cheese, you can always omit this because it's good. It's good either way. It's good either way. So I'm just going to smooth that down in there. And you're going to top it. I got... I like to use the Fiesta blend cheese because mm -hmm. it's got it's got cheddar jack, it's got um, cheddar. I'm sorry, Monterey Jack, and then it's got cheddar. Okay. And then it's a, it it turns a really pretty color when you put it under the broiler. Gotcha. So I'm gonna put a little cheese over the top. So um, what most folks would use with this would be half and half. So I use the evaporated milk, which. That's mm -hmm. old school right oh, there. Yeah. So I tried to make old school as we can go. Real butter, real mm -hmm. potatoes. Got to use real butter. Oh Nothing yeah. Nothing like real oh, butter. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I want to tell you something quick about box mashed potatoes okay. versus real potatoes. Uh huh. Um, and I'm gonna throw this down for you real quick. While instant potatoes aren't exactly a nutritional powerhouse, a box of plain instant mashed potatoes is cheap, easy fast meal without mm -hmm. a lot of chemical additives mm -hmm. which will fill you up and save you money you just don't get the vitamin c that's in a potato oh, okay. now I, I looked around again no but instant potatoes are healthy um the short answer is no it's not as good there's yeah. sometimes there's the sodium in there mm -hmm. uh instant mashed potatoes have substantially more sodium and much less dietary fiber mm. okay uh, boxed potatoes started in 19, 
2012 hmm. by Mr. Sullivan. Don't know his first name because they didn't tell me. Hmm. Flake potatoes started in 1954. And... Um, the box potatoes are also used as a thickening agent for gravy, soups, and sauces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely do a potato soup with this stuff. So how long are you going to cook that? So, uh, well, I'm, just, I'm not really going to cook it. It's already cooked. I'm going to run it under the broiler. Ah, so I'm going to run it under the broiler and let it let the cheese get bubbly. And it'll get kind of brown and bubbly and melty. And when we're done, I have some green onions from my garden. And we're just going to put those green onions on the top. You grew these. Nice and, I grew these. Yeah, funny story. I had some leftover green onions and I didn't want to throw them away because it felt wasteful. So I literally took them outside and stuck them in a pot and they've been growing for four years. That's hilarious. Yep. And I like a little bacon bits. I'm oh a, yeah. A but if you get a twice baked Ooh, potato from the you. store. I, I want that one. You, you want this one? <laughs> one? All right y'all, we got cool stuff coming up. The next thing we're doing is a red bean. Homemade style from Mississippi recipe. Hang on. All right, so this next thing we got going here is even going to be something you're going to get a kick out of. Now, um, I wanted to do something with a tomato, and, mm -hmm. and there's a, you can do tomatoes in the oven. You, there's all kind of, they do rice dressing in it, and they do all kind of neat things, but this is something quick and easy. Once you learn how to get the core out of the tomato. Yeah, that was a challenge. You will end up fighting a tomato. But I was fighting the tomato like you were fighting the potatoes. We're just cutting it open, mm -hmm. and then using the scoop, the tomato scoop peels yeah. it gets it all out of there so first thing we'll do won't you start putting everything in there which okay. is two cans of tuna that was in water <laughs> drained and flaked okay you're gonna add a third a cup of mayonnaise all right one stalk of celery finely chopped you know how long it mm -hmm. takes to finely chop celery oh i can imagine two tablespoons of chopped red onion mm -hmm. two tablespoons of fresh cilantro chop easy to chop that oh yeah and then you want a half a lemon the zest and the juice mm -hmm. will go in there so really you're putting everything in there together and mixing it all together so while you're mixing those and my recipe that i found didn't call for this but i know you're going to want a shot of salt just salt. a shot mm -hmm. just a shot because tomatoes don't come with salt when right. you get them from the store. Mm -hmm. Or pepper, so I'll put a little tiny shot and I'll put a little bit of black pepper right in the bottom. And you start filling them. Okay. And let me tell you a little bit about tuna. The first canned tuna come out in 1904. That's oh, wow. That's been a minute ago. A minute. Albert P. Hawhill began canning tuna because in California, the areas were overfished for sardines and he had a mm -hmm. bunch of empty tuna cans. Mm -hmm. So he started putting it in there. He experimented with albacore tuna, which travel up and down the West Coast. Okay. And um, in 1904, he sold 700 cases. Golly. By 1914, he was producing mm -hmm. 400,000 cases a year. Golly. Um, after World War II, the demand outpaced the supply of a core tuna. By the 1920s, canners also used skipjack tuna, bluefin tuna, and mm -hmm. yellowfin tuna. Okay. Uh, fishing boats for tuna have changed over the years. The boats could only fish local because of ice and refrigeration. Right. And after that, they could go out and stay for a month and bring back piles of tuna. Um, nowadays, tunas are caught by seines, which they surround the tuna and come in and get them. Hmm. Um, size and packing has changed on tuna. It used to be a seven ounce can of tuna, and then it was a six ounce can of tuna, and now yeah. it's a five ounce can of tuna. Right. And now they got tunas in a pouch. They do. And they, um, the industry has actually started the flavored tunas mm -hmm. and different varieties of tunas. and. Um, but nothing sells more than the original so tuna. You can't go wrong with just a good tuna with mayonnaise and a little pickle relish. Oh, yeah. The mustard in there. The FDA recommends that adults should eat four ounces of fish two times a week. Mm -hmm. So you can do some tuna fish one day or, you know. But I got to tell you the coolest part. The largest okay. tuna ever caught was in 1979 in Nova Scotia. Wow. He caught it on a fishing pole. It was 1,496 pounds. That's a lot of cans of tuna. Ah, 
Golly. <laughs> it took him 45 minutes to reel it in. My gosh. Look what I got for you. I'm going to take one of these ones we already made. Okay. And you get one of those crackers. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty. And would you like a little tomato? Or are you just going uh, with the tuna? I think I'm just going with the tuna. You just going with the tuna. I'm just going to go with there the tuna. There you go. I think. Right. Let's get a little taste of that. Okay, I'm going to grab this little knife here and be fancy with it. Look at that. Yeah. All kind of seasonings. Uh, I say seasonings. Um, mm. Onions, cilantro. That's very good. Lemon, tuna. Does it have a tuna kick mm. that you like? It does. The onions are really good. The onion, you can really taste the onion in there and the cilantro. It's really good. <laughs> Just a little something cool. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. It ain't over yet. We still got cheesecake to go and we got a heck of a drink you done made. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Yep. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Crawfish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. What a fun time we had today. I want to thank the sponsors. Diaz Tire. They rock. Leader's Fried Chicken. Great folks. Capital City Produce. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Uncle Larry. Blue Runner. It's been a good time, y'all. We had a bunch of good food. I'm fixing to go out there and start eating with them. I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week.